Over 50% of the population believes in ghosts, and one in five say they've had a paranormal experience, but most people would prefer to avoid ghostly encounters. The group you're about to meet aren't most people. This is the Innovative Paranormal Research Team, and their innovative approach sets them apart from other ghost hunting groups. I have a great deal of concern for the spirits, as well as the family being affected by them. I think we're maybe a parallel universe. That's why some people can see beings or entities and some people can't. They have the ability to dodge uh, us and, and not be willing to come out and play, so to speak. Parts of us left behind when we pass, for whatever reason, unfinished business. Um, I think that ghosts are probably people just like us. It's not like watching it on a TV show or reading a ghost story, that actually being in the situation, it's a lot more frightening than you would think. You're supposed to be safe in your own home. If you don't feel comfortable, then, you know, whatever it is that you think you have or whatever it is that you may have, let's try to figure that out. If uh, the unexplained were easy to prove, there wouldn't be anything unexplained. Today's investigation brings the IPR team to Franklin, Kentucky, population 8,000, give or take a few. Six miles from downtown Franklin is the historic site known as Octagon Hall. Its octagonal shape makes it very unique, but its shape isn't the only reason it's unique. I'm your host, Katie Cook, and it's time to find out why the IPR team has been called here today. Hi. Hello, Katie. Hi, Katie Cook. I'm Bill Bird. Nice to meet Very you. Very nice to meet Glad you. To have you. Welcome to Octagon Hall. I'm excited to be here. Come on in. Okay. Historically, the Confederate soldiers were here, and they hi would hide from the Union soldiers that were uh, in pursuit. I've had almost everything happen here. I've actually seen two apparitions. There was a an apparition. This one was somewhat translucent, smoky uh, appearing uh, of a Confederate soldier. He had the big floppy hat, the beard, the long coat. This is the attic access. During the war, there was a Confederate soldier that was in the house and hiding from the Union Army, so they put him in the attic. When they went to get him, he had taken his boot off and apparently it bled to death. But there's also the story of the family that built the house and the tragic death of their daughter. Anybody who knows any history about this site knows that that's what the general consensus is, is that this place is uh, Mary Elizabeth's place. We're here in the lowest level of the house in the winter kitchen, and this is the fireplace where it said that Mr. Caldwell's daughter Mary Elizabeth caught fire, eventually leading to her death. Now we don't know if she died in this room or another room in the house. What we do know is there are many reports of paranormal activity in this lower level. She appeared once in the basement, and I, I, the first time I thought it was actually a physical person. And So it was pretty clear. Uh, oh, very, very solid appearing. And I, I actually, I turned around and said, can I help you, thinking it was real. And uh, she started to turn and just faded away. To lose a child at that early age, uh, it would be tough as a parent to, to have to deal with that. With very little documentation, it's hard to know exactly how long Mary Elizabeth might have lived after her accident. My best guess is she probably lasted for a few days and, and the shock and the infection all, all set in. That's what caused her death. There's certainly no shortage of people that could be haunting Octagon Hall. I think there's a lot more history here than anybody will ever truly know. Oh, there's always something happening at the Octagon Hall. It's always exciting. But how easy is it to get proof? It's like seeing a UFO. You, there's no way of, without the photographs, it's just a story. But if anyone can get proof, it's these guys. We were here for the 150th anniversary last year, and I was taking a group in. I had come and was trying to direct some people to sit down. I said, well, you can sit over here. And, and then when I walked by, I said, excuse me. On my audio after that, it said, excuse you. In fact, Octagon Hall is known for producing excellent electronic voice phenomenon known as EVPs. Okay. 
Next, we'll hear the story of a soldier that died on the front steps of Octagon Hall. When they got up the next morning, he, he was laying on the steps dead. And later, are the spirits in the mood to communicate? Octagon Hall in Franklin, Kentucky is said to be one of the most haunted sites in the South. IPR's co-founder, Paul Browning. The Octagon Hall is probably the most haunted location that we've ever investigated. We want to raise the curiosity level of whatever may be here. No longer an active member of the group, Paul has come along today to help out with something the group calls indirect provoking. Indirect provoking, you know, there's this new thing out where uh, people like to directly assault or insult uh, wh whoever it is that they're trying to locate or, or bring out into the open. Um, and I really feel that that's an improper way of doing it. There are other ways of, of evoking a response out of something that may be in a building, and that's by altering the environment in some way, shape, or form. We play mostly on the curiosity factor, so that um, whatever is around, hopefully will come out and interact with us. Sherry and Keela are hoping to stir up curiosity by wearing period dresses. Costumes could spark interest, or it might have a memory to them. The dresses aren't comfortable, and worst of all, they're hot. It's supposed to be one of the hottest days of the year. This is hot and it's wool. I'm going to be roasting in this. The things you do for the sake of proving that the paranormal exists. I am concerned about the heat tonight. It makes it more challenging to stay focused. It's gonna be really, really brutal. And we've got members of the team that are wearing long pants and all of that. It's gonna be, it's gonna be an easy bake oven in there. It's over 100 degrees today and they can't run air conditioning in the house because it will interfere with the recording quality. <laughs> but the heat may not be the only thing stopping Paul from getting into those wool trousers. This is actually, you know what? This is actually pretty small. I don't think I'm gonna be able to put them on like that. Back in the day, they didn't have the luxury of Twinkies. So hopefully these buttons are going to be good enough and not going to pop. Let's hope the spirits can overlook the fit of the costumes. Another part of the team's indirect provoking is the isolation experiment. Our famous isolation experiment. That's where we try to put uh, one of our investigators in a vulnerable situation. It's my first time to Octagon Hall. Mm -hmm. Anyone who approaches a structure to investigate it they bring their own energy. I have not had a um, really profound paranormal experience. I mean, I'm looking to have one. It, that would be wonderful. Tonight could be the night. Sherry, Keela, and Paul are ready for the first isolation experiment, where Keela will play the role of a young girl in the hopes that Mary Elizabeth might take notice. It's a nice house. They get into character as they approach. The team believes that that first entry can set the stage for the entire day. They could be watching us. They could be listening to us. For all I know, he's sitting in the seat right next to me. There's so much history here, um, and so many things took place day and night that there very well could be things around us at this moment. I don't think anybody's here right now. He doesn't give me the key. Don't do anything you ain't supposed to. You know right from wrong. They have found doll fragments they believe used to belong to Mary Elizabeth. Well now, you know, I reckon if we get this place, you'll probably be able to have those because I, I figured they probably would have took those with them when they left. Will Keela's newbie energy bring good results? Will sitting alone in a dark basement rattle her nerves? In the meantime, another newbie's nerves are already shot. Hey, Dudley. Yeah. Can I talk to you for a second? Yeah. Okay. Um, I have, I have a little issue that's popped up. And okay. Um, I packed so much stuff for the shoot and everything that I walked off without my uh, investigative equipment. You got to be kidding. No, I'm sorry. Okay. Dudley was not pleased with me. Uh, the reaction was not happy. We kind of needed that. I know. To do the investigation. I'm so sorry. Not good for an investigator in training. Despite forgetting her equipment, Heather will be able to take part in the full team investigation. And if the first isolation experiment is any indication, it could be an active night. While I was down there, I was playing with the dolls. Ma, I love my new dolls. It looked like a shadow had walked across the light in that room. 
The spirits in the house seem to be responding well to the investigation so far, and Keila feels like she's finally had her first paranormal experience. Next, Paul decides to do one more isolation experiment, taking on the role of the wounded soldier. He'll be completely alone in the house. After Keela's experience in the basement, Paul has decided to do one more isolation.